again, total honor to be here. It's so exciting that in, you know, in Europe, there's just this dynamic network forming, right? There, it's sort of, we need all hands on deck in this. I grew up in Newfoundland, Canada, a little fishing village and, and headed out to sea and I fished the globe. The trouble was th is that the cod stocks crashed, uh, you know, 30,000 uh, fishermen were thrown out of work. That's where I learned that you know, there aren't going to be any jobs on a dead ocean. And the question changed for me. It was like, what does the ocean want us to grow? It's a it's a big shift or people see it as a big shift. Um, I can imagine that that there's a different culture behind it. First uh, hunting and now now farming. What were places or aspects where you um, perceived uh, resistance? Well, I mean, I couldn't hang out at the same bar as I used to. You know, like what fish tale would I tell? Like, whoa, there was this big piece of kelp and it was flat calm, right? You know? <laughs> if you look at scalability, scalability as a means of impact and feeding the world. With the crisis on land, the nutrient crisis, um, freshwater crisis, we will be growing in the ocean. But the question is, what will it look like? And will it look like industrial agriculture or can we do food right this time? And it's, um, uh, you know, 50 small scale farms, a small scale ranging from, you know, 75 to 10 acres. And that sort of network production is, I think, essential for scale just because of volatility. And also, I think it speeds up the learning curve. If you have many sites gathering information and use it to network those and create a hub, it allows us to stay ahead of the climate curve. So I think it gives us, as small-scale farmers, medium-sized, I think our competitive advantage is the power of our knowledge networks of just like share, pulling that, that information from the ocean and sharing it and then bringing it back into, back to our farms. If, if, if you were, were now in the, the position of making the transition again from fisherman to seaweed farmer. Uh, what would you do differently? Um, I think one is the, the role of um, data. My collaboration with the scientists has become way more intense, like daily level. We're constantly do, using our farm as a data platform and the other farms. So in four states, we have um, sensor, sensor packages that are feeding data out. And farmers, by the way, get paid $25,000 a piece to harvest data and then give that to the scientists. So, you know, I, the amount of mistakes I made over 15 years were just stunning, right? So yeah. I'm going to like just get to the point where I know what I'm doing and then I'm going to die. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The Green Wave program, we have two things. We do um, reef replication and market innovation under the nonprofit. Reef replication is training online and offline. It's uh, planning and policy and third R&D. And then the other, the market innovation is product development. And that's like carbon markets, bullion cubes, you know, uh, data harvesting, like it's, it's that broad sense. And then mobilizing and curating investors and educating the investment community and then a buyer's network. And we don't do everything. We have a network approach. So we just, you know, radical collaboration of bringing people together. Uh, in, our, in Green Wave, we've got a, a two-track training program. One, it's very a very high-touch program where we provide seed. We help people permit. We go, people come to our floating classroom. Uh, we go to their farms to help set up. We teach them harvesting. We've got a buyer's net network where we connect them to. Then we have a low touch program that we're rolling out, which is for the thousands of other people, which, which in, involves toolkits, a knowledge network where farmers get a, on a call together. Um. But, but can, can you also tell a little bit about the new seaweed farmers that are coming there? Absolutely. So we have a waiting list now of 4,000 farmers. It's just stunning. The people who come to us are all walks of life, right? They're definitely fishermen who understand the need to diversify catch, right? You know, so they'll go shrimping one season and do kelp in the off season. 
Um, there's a lot of young land-based farmers who can't afford land. Um, a lot of indigenous communities who have lo who both have rights to the water and have long um, uh, traditions of seaweed, right? The one thing I'd say that was really fra uh, surprising, you know, I created Green Wave to train, you know, drunken fishermen like me. And instead, we stepped back and looked at who our people were in our hatcheries, the new entrepreneurs creating value-added products, the farmers, and it's mostly women. So this prospect of women being the architects of the new blue economy, and how would they build it differently? What principles? You'll benefit from the network knowledge, but you're going to also have to feed into it, right? Other people are doing innovations at, on different elements, whether it's the hatchery, whether it's the anchor systems, whether it's the um, data collection systems that you need as a farmer. This industry is at its infancy, and the only way you're going to succeed is with, by actually sharing information. So we open our books and encourage people to open the books and be like, hey, this is the, our margin. This is what we're making. Price is also a way to bring farmers together. So we're working now on a digital co-op because in a co-op system in the U.S., you can actually discuss and set prices, which you can't do as an individual farmer or it's price fixing, right? Yeah. So um, all these different kinds of incentivizing collaboration, I think are going to be really, really key. Well, that's uh, impressive. Do you have competitors? And there's all this activity that's happening completely without us. And that's a sign of success. At the same time, the sharks have arrived, the finance sharks. And because they see as much opportunity in the ocean as us. Um, and so that's some of the biggest seafood companies in the world. You know, I believe in working with everybody, but I also really believe that we need shared benefits. So who farms matters to us, right? And who, who owns the, the, the value chain really matters. Do you have also specific questions to uh, to us as a seaweed sector in, in the Netherlands and in Europe? One of the things we're finding is, you know, I knew my patch of water really well, farmed it forever. But then as we began replicating a very obvious thing that I hadn't thought about, you know, it was like, my God, it's so different in every area. I, I'm wondering how you all are thinking about uh, the replicability, right, of ocean farming uh, as you move sort of further um, out throughout Europe. going to discuss uh, this and we're also going to uh, come back to you uh, because I think that this will also lead to uh, a lot of questions. So it's good that we uh, that we establish this line. I would love, and it would be uh, self-serving on, on my part, I would love to touch base every couple months. Yeah. You just hop on a call and compare notes. You know, the great thing about seaweed is what we don't know, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the learning journey is going to be wonderful, right? Yeah. All right, great. Thanks for the conversation.